The fastest way to get where we're going is usually to hit the open road. But if you're a turtle, hitting the open road presents significant challenges. They're slow and they're small. And when we think of roadkill, we tend to think of a deer that we see on the side of the road or a raccoon or something, some of these large or medium sized um, mammals and turkeys and things like that. It's estimated that there are probably more small animals killed on roadways than large because you can't see them and you may not even know that you've hit them. Three years ago, you began the main turtle roadkill project. Tell me what you've found out in the last three years. This was an exciting project where we were able to get volunteers involved in collecting data all over the state, which is really important because there are only so many wildlife biologists out there and you need a fair amount of data to be able to say anything. And so we um, recruited volunteers and trained them on uh, survey protocols and turtle identification and data collection. Volunteers surveyed roads where turtles are known to cross in 127 towns in all of Maine's 16 counties. What they found was a little bleak. We asked them to survey three times a year during the active season for turtles, which is May through September, and document any roadkill, any wildlife interacting with the road, trying to cross, successfully crossing, unsuccessfully crossing, with particular emphasis on turtles. and. Um, we found in that time that we had 286 turtle sightings over those three years. They weren't all roadkill. Some were turtles nesting on the sides of the roads because they look for open, sunny, sandy places to lay their eggs. Some were turtles that successfully crossed, but unfortunately the majority were turtle roadkill. The majority of the turtles spotted were Maine's most common, the snapping turtle and the painted turtle. But we did actually have at least one of every species that we have seven species of turtles in the state of Maine. I think all of Europe only has five species. So it's, it's, it's pretty great to have to have seven. The status of four species of turtles found in Maine is cause for concern. Box and Blanding turtles are listed as endangered, the spotted turtle as threatened, and the wood turtle is a species of special concern. Why are turtles crossing the road to begin with? Wildlife moves across the landscape just like we do, right? And, and um, they have the things that they're looking for, just like we think, I need to go to the grocery store. A turtle says, I'm going to go to my favorite spot to, to snack and they move from where they hibernated to where they know they'll get food in the spring and the summer, or in the, in the, later in the summer, they want to go to a particular kind of a place to lay their eggs, for example. Turtles can live to be 60, 70, 80 years old, and so they may have a place that they go to every single year. And in the meantime, we may have put a road in between where they like to overwinter and where they like to nest. The study showed at least a third of the turtle crossings were at locations biologists didn't anticipate. The higher number of turtle deaths, however, were not surprising. It's a pretty big deal for turtle species and their populations because it takes them so long to become adults and reproductive that losing one adult sets you back for a decade or more to be able to replace it. And so it's a, it's a, it can have a much bigger impact on the population than for species that reproduce at a much younger age. Keeping them alive means more than just getting them across the road. Particularly for our rarer turtles, they don't lay that many eggs. So a snapping turtle might lay 40 eggs, but a Blanding's turtle might lay 10. What can people do if they do see a turtle struggling to cross the road, should they intervene? If you're comfortable and it's safe, direct traffic until the turtle moves across or help it with, I've, I've used a shovel in the back of my truck. Hey, a couple of things to remember, don't pick up turtles by their tails. Or their spines attached to the to the shell and it can, it can harm them. With other turtles, yes, just pick them up by the edges of the shell, move them across. A snapping turtle, you're gonna wanna make sure that your hands are on the back half of the shell. Um, behind the, the back feet because they have a very long neck and they are to protect themselves they would they may try and bite you. Sarah why is it important that we protect turtles? A feature of the biodiversity of, um, of the state and of, of the world and it's an it's an indicator of um, our, our impacts on the landscape and we don't know what things um, happen when we throw that imbalance, when we throw in imbalance into the system. And I don't think we want to find out. And I think we want to keep everybody around for as long as we can.
Now here's the deal. If you get an injured turtle to a rehabilitation center, there's a chance they'll heal from even serious injuries and live for many years afterward. If you'd like to learn more about the Maine Turtle Roadkill Project, just head to our website or our new center main app.